So this exercise 6C is split into two parts. It's split into proving ones like you've just been doing for the first half of today's lesson. And the second half of it is solving equations. So if you've been able to keep up with the stuff on solving equations, this is just an extension of that. If you haven't been able to keep up with that part, this is a good chance for us to recap some of those things with solving equations. So I have two different equations here. Um, you'll notice though that they are no longer in radians mode. It's implied by this bit here. It doesn't need to tell you to put it in degrees mode. So if I were you, I'd make sure that your calculator is in degrees mode for this question. So you go to the setup. So shift setup. You have to press shift first and then angle unit number two. And then change it to number one for radians. Okay. Shh, shh, shh. So the first equation that we want to solve is this, OK? Now, the calculator can't do sec theta. But what it can do is third letter, cos theta. To go from sec theta to cos theta, we do the reciprocal, OK? So we're also going to do the reciprocal on this side. And reciprocal means 1 divided by. So you're going to do 1 divided by negative 2.5 which is minus 2 fifths. So you can take the reciprocal of both sides. And then you can solve the equation like normal. When I'm saying take the reciprocal, I could also, if you wanted to, sec theta is 1 over cos theta. So 1 over cos theta is minus 2.5. You could also rearrange this equation, and you would come up with the same thing here. Okay, I'm just wanting you to know that if you take this reciprocal and you take that reciprocal, it works. So, theta is found by doing the inverse cos of minus two fifths. And I'm in radians mode. And you get that theta is 113.6 degrees. And that's to one decimal place, OK? Remind me for cosine, how do you find the next solution? Good, Harmon. You do 360 minus the one that's on your calculator. So you do 360 minus, and you get 246.4 degrees to one decimal place. So those are your two solutions for this particular one we've got here. It was an inverse. It was a reciprocal trig question. We changed it into a normal trig question. And then we just solved the equation as before, OK? So, okay, so how can it, at 113 degrees, how can it be positive cos? Because remember, the cosine graph goes like this. So that's at 90. Yeah. So it would be negative. Yep, easy mistake. OK. So the next one says that cot 2 theta is equal to 0 0.6. OK, well, first of all, I want to get away from cot and cosec and sec. And to get away from that, I'm going to do the reciprocal. What's the reciprocal of cot 2 theta? Tan 2 theta. Don't forget that the argument, the thing inside, is 2 theta. And the reciprocal of 0 0.6 is 1 divided by 0 0.6. OK? So this is reciprocal means 1 divided by. So 1 divided by 0 0.6 is 5 over 3. And I'm now going to try and solve this equation. But we have to be careful. What is different about this equation to the first one? It's 2 theta, not theta. And the range is for theta. So we need to change the range so that 2 theta is now going to be between 0 and 720 degrees. OK, if you're not sure how to do this, you need to catch up on the trig videos from the summer. So I'm going to solve this equation for 2 theta by doing the inverse tan of 5 over 3. Which is... 59.04 degrees. In fact, I'm just going to keep it at 59.0 degrees just to. And how do you find the solutions for tan theta? What do you do next? You plus 180. So we're going to keep plusing 180 until we get to 720. So on my calculator, I'm literally just going to press add 180. So I get 239. Add 180, 419. Add 180, 599. Add 180, 779. Ah, oh, but look, that one's too big. 
it's gone outside that range there. So if 2 theta is equal to all of this, I find out theta by halving it, because these are all of what 2 theta is equal to, and I just want to find out what theta is. So I'm just going to do half of 59, which is 29.5. I'm going to do half of 239, which is 119.5. Half of 419 is 209.5, and half of 599 is 299.5 degrees, OK? It's four solutions. If you're comfortable with doing this already, I want you to just think to yourself, why are there four solutions when normally for tan there are two solutions in that range between 0 and 360? Why are there now four solutions instead of two? to do with the 2 theta. The 2 theta as a transformation, what does 2 theta do as a transformation? Compress. It compresses it. So if there are normally two solutions, if we've compressed it into a, a scale factor of a half, we're now going to fit four solutions inside that area. Okay. So the only thing that's new here is this stage. Okay. This stage is new, and this stage is new. All of this bit down here is a recap of what trig equations were from before which I know not all of you have had the opportunity to fully, fully look at. So I'm trying to kind of tell you some of the things now as well, okay? So this one's a bit weird. So it says solve cot theta equals zero in the interval between zero and two pi. So we're now in radians mode. Now we've got that cot theta is equal to zero. And we don't like cot theta, so we're going to take the reciprocal and we're going to do tan theta. And the reciprocal of zero is 1 divided by 0. Do that on your calculator. Not possible. So 1 divided by 0 is, we don't normally say not possible. We say a word beginning with U, undefined. undefined. So we're saying that tan theta is going to be undefined. And you can't put into your calculator, do the inverse tan of undefined, OK? Undefined is a particular point on the tan graph, OK? If you think about the tan graph, we know it looks like this. It's the asymptotes, OK? Where do you get, where are these asymptotes in terms of degrees or radians? Pi. It's not pi. It's 90 or 270, so it's pi over 2. So tan theta is undefined when there is an asymptote, i.e. when theta is equal to pi over 2. That's the first one that there is an asymptote. And for tan theta, you are allowed to find the next solution by just adding on pi. And you can keep adding on pi because it's adding on 180. And when I add pi to this, I get 3 pi over 2. And I don't need to do any more, because if I added on pi again, what would I get if I added on pi again? 5 over 2 pi, which is clearly going to be bigger than 2 pi, because 5 over 2 is 2.5. So this is weird, because if you tried to just rely on your calculator, you would go, oh, it's undefined. I can't do it. But remember that tan is an odd graph, a weird graph, that does have bits of it that are undefined, where there are these asymptotes. And these asymptotes occur at pi over 2, or 90, and 3 pi over 2, and 270. What was that? You sure? Any questions about this weird question? So, so the answers are just pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Because when you do the reciprocal, when, yeah, if it's undefined when you do this, then if you put in the undefined bits, then cot theta must be zero at that particular point. I think, is there one more example? No, you're going to have a go at doing this one for me, and then we're going to do some questions from exercise 6C. If you have not done much on trig equations, I would recommend just listening to me going through this one. If you have done enough on trig equations, you can just try this one yourself, okay? 
So first of all, you'll notice that this is between 0 and 360 degrees. And we've got it with 3 theta, and they've only got it with theta. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the range by tripling everything. And 360 times 3 is 1080 degrees. So that's the first thing we do is change the range. And we have cosec 3 theta is equal to 2. Third letter is S. So sine of 3 theta, this is the reciprocal, will be the reciprocal of 2, which is a half. Now, if you want to find out what 3 theta is, you can do the inverse sine of a half. But probably, you should know what the inverse sine of a half is in degrees. Does anyone think they know what angle of sine gives you a half? It's not 60, it's the other one. It's 30 degrees for this one. It's 30 degrees, OK? For sine, the way you find the second value is by doing 180 minus the one that the calculator gives you. OK, that's how you find the second value. So you're going to do 180 minus the 30, which is 150. And these are your two starting values that you can get. After you have these two starting values, you're allowed to add or subtract 360 to either of them until you fill up the range that you've got, which goes all the way to 1,080. So I'm just going to add 360 to this one. And if I add 360 to it, I get 390. And if I add another 360, I get 750. And if I add another 360, my brain isn't doing it very well today. It goes over. You get 1, 1, 1, 10, which is too big, OK? Then for this set, if I add 360 to these ones, I'm going to find the other solutions. So I'm going to add 360, and I get 510. And I'm going to add 360, and I get 870. And obviously, if I add 360 to that, it's going to go too big. So there are now six solutions. Just to remind you, for people who haven't seen this so much before, you found the first one getting it from the calculator. And the second one was found by doing 180 minus the one that you got on the calculator. You always get those two starting ones for sine, and then you just keep adding 360 to them. But all of those things are equal to 3 theta, and we want to find out what theta is. So we're going to take all of these ones that we've got here, and we're going to divide them all by 3. So 30 divided by 3 is 10. 390 divided by 3 is 130. And 750 divided by 3 is 250. 150 divided by 3 is 50. 510 divided by 3 is 170, and 870 divided by 3 is 290. So you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 solutions here. With sine, you normally get two solutions. This time, though, because of the 3 theta, we've compressed it into a factor of a third. So instead of there being two solutions, we've actually got six solutions in there. OK, we're going to do some more questions from exercise 6E, and we'll go from there, OK?